Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. It's October 16, 2023. Great to be with all of you this morning. My name is Bob Lang and I run explosiveoptions.net uh, and a great, amazing chat room with some incredibly wonderful and amazing people as well, too. Um, great to be with all of you today. So let's go ahead and talk about markets here and what's happening. So obviously last week was a was a pretty um, rough week all the way around, not just uh, in the markets, but also news driven last week and of course we had that horrific attack on um israel by um by hamas group and um it um it really um raised the temperature of um of what's going on around the rest of the world and you know a lot of uncertainty out there and with that uncertainty becomes uh you know when people start wondering what is around the corner next um when there's a little less um assured reason of knowing of what's going to be happening People take protection and they buy um, puts, and we see volatility start to rise. And we saw that happen last week. The VIX up towards 21% at one point last week. It's down a little bit this morning. Of course, it's down uh, to about 1860. VIX futures down quite a bit. I think it's reflecting the fact that there wasn't anything um, earth shattering happening over the weekend. Nothing, no attacks, nothing new happening. So I think the markets are kind of breathing a sigh of relief. Um, we did have a down session on Friday. Um, it was down early. Uh, it was up early and then it was down and then it came back up and then it, it closed um, uh, pretty weak on the uh, on, on the day on Friday. So um, it was a down week for uh, for most of the markets as well or slight, uh, slightly lower. The Russell 2000 up uh, w was actually down sharply up almost 2%. It's down almost 3% on the year right now. Um, it's bouncing back a little bit this morning. We see the S&P futures are up about 18.75, NASDAQ up about um, uh, 37 points here, and the Dow Industrials up strong up about 178 points. So even though Pfizer is is off a bit uh, following earnings. So um, so what are we what are we looking at over here? Well, news over the weekend we saw Lulu got uh, is being um, accepted into the S&P 500, um, so it's up sharply about six percent on that uh, on on that news. Um, again, not um, fundamentally driven, so um, we have to pay attention to the technicals and see if that is a, a good breakout point for that stock. Um, interest rates are up again this morning. We see the T, uh, I, I, you see here I have the TNX, which is the 10-year um, yield. Um, yields are up. You see over here in the right-hand corner, bottom right-hand corner, 4.677%. We closed Friday at 4.629. Um, we had pushed up towards uh, close to 5% a couple of weeks ago and backed off a bit. And then earlier in the uh, later later last week on Wednesday or Thursday, um, uh, there was a, a very poor bond auction and there were some bond sellers out there that triggered some uh, some more selling. And we saw bond yields um, rise sharply on thursday when the markets got uh, got slammed on that day so um we also did see uh yields come back down on friday so uh, in more of a safety trade so i i think that that's um that sort of volatility is going to be with us for quite some time here we got to pay uh got to pay attention to that okay and 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 just take advantage of, of opportunities when we have them so speaking of that um i want to show you how difficult it is to be trading um, in this market right now, it's, it's it is not um, there is not a theme of of uh, of, of an uptrend right now. Um, if there is an uptrend, it's a, it's under pressure, as IBD tells us. Also, um, uh, there's not really a definitive downtrend here. Although some of the tech, uh, technical indicators that I look at are pointing in that direction. Let's take a look at this chart here, for instance. So we'll take a look at two. So this is Pepsi, and you can see it's been a a, a a heavy downtrend since uh, peaking in um, oh, back in May, and then we had another peak back in July. Lower highs, lower lows. We know that that is a definition of a downtrend. So we, we had a W pattern over here. Looked like we were going to make a run here, and we, we got rejected right at this. This is the 50-day moving average right here, this purple line. Um, and then we have a, uh, a a death cross down over here. 50-day moving average crossed under the 200, um, and we we're we we're clearly far away. From all those moving averages but we had earnings last week right so we thought well maybe earnings are going to be strong and guidance was going to be good and the market was going to uh give them a pass and say okay well um 
okay, Pepsi, we'll go ahead and start buying some of it. Well, that wasn't even the case, right? And you can see that um, after the earnings came out here, we had a big pop up here and we had a, a rejection at this other moving average and then a horrendous day on Thursday and a barely a blip on, on Friday. So this, these are stocks, um, the, you know, this, this group um, and also some other groups in technology and so forth. You have to be careful what you're getting into. If you're, if you're going to try and play for a bounce, play it for a bounce, right? What was this bounce? This bounce was about three days long. Um, we had this long legged doji down to 155. We bounced up to 164, which is a really good nine point move. Um, of course, volatility was high. So if you're buying options, those call options were very expensive. But you, you have to pay, pay attention to what's happening in the overall market when you're uh, trading stocks and, uh, and options, especially. Um, and you're looking for an opportunity to make some money. If you're if, if you're if you're trying to catch a bottom and say, um, OK, this is it. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to dive in here. And it turns out that it's not a bottom. Well, you're going to be in, in in rough shape. Why not just wait till the stock stops going down if you want to start accumulating the stock? Because, by, you know, it's human nature. We all feel some regret. We call it FOMO, fear of missing out. We all feel regret that we're going to miss an up move and not being able to participate in that move. So um, I, I, I think there's always a chance to, to get on board. You can never, ever um, just freeze yourself out of an opportunity to, to get in and buy some stock. Look at Tesla, for instance. And Tesla has has uh, been a, uh, a stock that's moved up and down, up and down for, for years, right? And people have worried that they've missed their opportunity when the stock moves up. And then all of a sudden the stock moves down and, and then people say, oh, well, I'm going to wait till it goes down even further. It never does. And it turns right back up, you know, um, wash, rinse and repeat that whole same drill all over again. So um, be careful what you're doing. Be, be careful where you're stepping. I'll give you another example here. This is the trade desk. TTD is the symbol here, right? And you can see that the stock had been in a, in a moderately... Um, moderately strong uptrend over the past um couple of months or a couple of weeks actually um we hit the lower bollinger band here at about 74 dollars made a nice run up to 85 that's about 15 percent in about looks like in about three weeks right but look what happened here we we tagged that upper bollinger band and just got body slammed on friday right I and mean, that was a big huge move down basically took out um the work of about three and a half days worth of, of, of up move in just one session, right? And this is brutal. I mean, if you're buying options on a stock like this, right? If you're expecting the stock to make higher highs and higher lows, and it doesn't do that, your options are getting killed. You're just absolutely getting killed on your options because the, the premiums are expensive. Um, and uh, unless you're taking profits on here, and basically what you're doing is if you get in a bar like this and you've got a follow through day, that's great. Um, but you only had, what, two days to be there, right? Now, not many of us have the patience enough to wait um, only for two days, right? Mo um, some of us are, 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 are quick on the trigger. That's great. But if you're only waiting for two days, these two days might not have been much movement at all in your call options if you bought them on the follow-through day. So here's the first day. Here's the follow-through day, right, up to $84. We only got to 80, 86, 85 and a half, 86, right? A buck and a half, right? And if, if you bought in the calls on, say, uh, the trade desk over here, you had basically a day or day and a half of holding it. And you're, and you're done. And again, you might not have made any money. But if you held it through Friday, you're surely losing money. Okay? Um, remember something. Um, if you're in a bearish trend... Three out of four stocks go down, right? 75%, three out of four stocks go down. And the one stock that doesn't go down may not go up, right? So what, So what, how does that, how do, how, how, do you, how do you square that? You could be looking at four stocks, three out of four, uh, out of four stocks, and three out of four of them go down. And you pick the one that doesn't go down, congratulations, but it may not go up either. It may just go sideways. And if you're buying options, you're getting killed on, the, on, the, on buying that premium. Okay, makes sense. All right, let's take a look at a couple of the charts here. Um, one that I always look at um, every uh, every week is the um, new highs, new lows, and I used to use the NYHL, which is the New York Stock Exchange. 
uh, high-low list. Now I, I've turned my attention to the NASDAQ high-low list, and you can see why, right? Over the past uh, two, two and a half months, since the beginning of August, we've been red, black, whatever, whatever you want to say. We've been below the zero line for the, for the better part of the last two and a half months, and that's bearish. That's bad. Breath um, is a great and this this particular indicator the breath is a, a great um, predictor of what's happening uh, down the down the road and we've we learned that back in 2018 uh, when uh, the breath indicators were starting to break down and the S&P 500 the rest of the markets were making new all time highs into the early part of October um, and uh, this this indicator started breaking down it would, what it basically was telling us was this was that the big institutions underneath the market were quietly selling the market and getting short. Um, and that ended up being a huge payoff for them in December when the S&P 500 fell close to 10% before the uh, before the Santa Claus rally hit um, after, uh, after, after Christmas. Um, but this is an indicator that I've watched very, very carefully. You know that I, that I do. And you can see there was a terrible day on Friday. Terrible day. We closed at minus 316. So what, what's happening when the when the rest of the market is going down and we only see a handful of stocks that are going up? That's that's terrible breath. That's 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 not a strong participation from all the groups that we that we like to see. And it, it means that this market rally, whatever or uptrend is being built on a house of cards. And it's very easy to pull a card away and and watch it crumble or tumble and by then it's already too late. So um, have some protection on as always. Um, again, here's the, uh, uh, I wanna take a look at the, ten, uh, the 30 year. I looked at the 10 year with you guys just a few moments ago. This is the 30 year um, treasury yield. And we can see this beautiful, nice uptrend of higher highs and higher lows. And if we get above that 4.9 area um, today or tomorrow, we're gonna make a run towards that 5% five, um, 5 one more time. So let's see, let's see where we're at right now on the TYX, 4.84, okay, so let's, let's look, what was that recent high, this is 4.88, so 4.885, whatever, so um, 4.9, let's call it, um, above 4.9, you know, going to be trouble for stocks, they're going to be bonds, they're going to, Bonds uh, in, uh, investors are going to be selling. They're going to uh, get out of their bonds. Yields are going to go up. And if we have a, another poor auction this week, as we did last week, you know, uh, the, the, the markets responded in kind to the poor auction and sold off uh, sharply on, uh, on Thursday. So um, we'll be watching that, seeing how that goes. And then um, let's see what else. Big week of earnings, right? Big week of earnings we have on uh, Wednesday. We have Tesla and Netflix, Lamb Research. Um, Alcoa, Las Vegas Sands, um, Morgan Stanley in the morning, ASM lithography as well on Wednesday morning, Thursday, Intuitive Surgical, um, Nokia, WD40, tomorrow morning, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Johnson & Johnson, Bank uh, New York Mellon, and um, Pinnacle, uh, along with interactive brokers and United Airlines. Nothing really, uh, a small uh, amount of ba uh, regional banks on, on, the, on the slate for tonight after the close. Um, one more thing I wanted to remind all of you guys of is, uh, in fact, I have another webinar coming up. <clears throat> I do these quarterly webinars now, and uh, you can see that uh, I, I put the links out quite a bit and uh, out, on, out on social media. And you can see, you can go to the website, go to web, uh, go to explosiveoptions.net, click on trading insights, and then scroll down, and you'll see the um, the uh, the registration here October 19th trading tools you need for success and that's the uh, I'm going to put that in, a, in in our chat room right now um, it, you'll see um, a link coming up on Twitter if you if you follow me on Twitter or on uh, Facebook or LinkedIn or if you're in the chat room or if you're you're going to get an email later on today if you're on our on our free uh, free list as well too so the trading tools you need um, for success um, I'm putting them all together some of the things that that work for me and that work for some other people as well um so um so here's a good uh, opportunity for you to learn um a little bit a bit more about uh trading not just trading options but trading um anything all together so um that's going to be it everyone i wish everybody a, a wonderful day of trading be careful good luck out there don't don't do much don't do too much to uh 
uh, damage yourself. Oh, one more thing. I'll show you the S&P 500 chart. This is a daily chart using uh, the Trend Spider um, uh, software program over here. And you can see um, head and shoulders pattern here, left head, uh, left shoulder, right uh, head here, right shoulder here. And we broke down um, and the line was tested. Uh, this 200 day moving average line was tested here uh, recently. And uh, looks like we're starting to roll over again. When the candles are, are pink or purple, it means bearish or cautiously bearish. Pink is cautiously bearish right so you get you we've got to um be on guard here be on alert here for for more downside now if you if you've got some puts on or you've raised a lot of cash then that's great that's what you need to do right so but if you if you haven't this is going to be a good good opportunity here especially the markets are up a little bit now this morning they've improved a little bit since we first started so good opportunity to take some money off the table today all right have a great day everyone and uh be safe i'll see you guys all back on Thursday morning. Um, good trading today and the rest of the week. And um, I'll see you. Um, I'll see you back then on Thursday. Thanks. Bye.